Hello everyone, it's Allie from Titan. Welcome back to our channel. I am here with what might be our longest video today. You guys might be asking, Allie, how can you have a longer video? You've had three 30 minute videos opening up 12 boxes of Yu-Gi-Oh! Well, my friends, we do have two Hobby Jumbo boxes here of 2021 Top Series 1 Baseball for Mauricio D. Now, Mauricio, you may remember his name, did get this super awesome card. I'll link it right up there. One of our first ever See It to Believe It episodes where we hit that triple SP of Lou Bob Bobachette and Jordan Alvarez from Series 2 Baseball last year. Might have even possibly been the first one ever pulled because when we pulled it, no one knew what it was. No one in chat knew what it was. They had to go elsewhere to search to give me information on that card because I had no idea what it is. So I wonder if we're trying to find something crazy here again. Do have two jumbo boxes. Each box only has 10 packs, but that doesn't mean they will be quick. There are 46 cards per pack. Also, each jumbo box does guarantee one auto and two relic cards, whereas regular hobby boxes guarantee one or the other. Uh, so I think I'm going to start with this one here just because I'm holding it up. I'll go ahead and set the other jumbo off to the side. Uh, we'll see how strictly I go through the base. I do like to try and pull out rookies out of Tops flagship, but since we're opening up back-to-back -back jumbo boxes and we do ship all base, I mean, in theory, if we miss anything, it's not too big of a deal. Uh, so we'll see how time goes, but let's go ahead and get on into box number one by snapping us into the corner. Uh, Tiny Knife is still in the other room. I should have grabbed that earlier. So I do need to go ahead and grab Tiniest Knife once more. Hey, Tiniest Knife did bring us good luck earlier, so let's crack on into box number one. All right, do have Juan Soto on the front, who, as Noogie did let me know quite some time ago, Juan Soto and I have almost the exact same birthday. It is the same day, uh, but he is actually one year younger than me. Uh, so it is just off by a year, October 25th, 97 and 98 for Juan Soto, which is just crazy to think about. Like, I don't know what type of way it makes me feel, but it makes me feel some kind of way. It's like, like man, if I was just good at baseball and if I was a dude... Maybe I could be cool like Juan Soto. I don't know, but here we go. The jumbo boxes this year do have the 1951 Major League All-Stars box loader. Uh, so there's just kind of like jumbo cards. They remind me of like cabinet cards, but skinnier. So let's go on ahead and open this on up. All right, so we do have number 21 in the set here. 51 box topper, 21 Buster Posey. All right, there's our all-star box topper. Box loader is what the pack says, but the card says topper on the back. Well, it says BT on the back. doesn't exactly say topper. But anyways, the jumbos also do come with two silver packs, so let's check on out silver pack number one. Oh, look at that. We have an Alec Baum rookie. Sleeve that up. Mike Trout. Mike Trouts are always cool to sleeve as well. Miguel Cabrera and Joey Gallo. And then the little advertisement. So I'll get those sleeved up after I get through these other two. Well, not other two, other four cards. All right, we have Davey Garcia, rookie. Jorge Soler, Cody Bellinger, and Chris Bryant. Okay, so just those two to be sleeved up, the Trout and the Bomb. Every time I say Alec Bomb's name, I'm worried YouTube is, like, going to auto-flag the video. <laughs> and be like, you're not supposed to say that. And I'm like, I don't mean that, YouTube. I'm literally just reading his name. But anyways... 46 cards, jumbo pack number one. Let's get started. Also, for some reason, it seems like a lot of these base cards are flipped every which way. We have a Christian Pache here already. Nope, that is not what I wanted to do. I want to have my rookie pile. We can just see how many rookies we get. Ryan Mountcastle. I think just for my own personal convenience sake, I'm just going to actually store all the base right off the bat behind me on the shelf. Uh, that way I don't actually have to make room for anything. We have a Kirby Yates foil. Jack Flaherty, 35th anniversary insert. And stars in service, Pedro Martinez insert. Kyle Lewis rookie cup. And also we did learn... All right, so these are actually upside down. These are supposed to go... Right, because you want those to be the same. Okay, so I finally learned the proper orientation of the horizontal cards. Uh, but we actually did see our first photo variation short print the other day for Daniel W. And it was backwards in the pack, so that is nice to see. So now we know any photo variations we come across, unless it's mistakenly not flipped around, should be flipped around in the pack for us to easily find it. Which I was hoping that was the case. I mean, Tops hasn't always done this. Tops started doing that last year, which is much appreciated. 
Uh, but Tops hasn't always done that, so that's why I was saying before we found that first one, I was like, I don't know, guys. Maybe not backwards, but I hope that is something that Tops continues. Uh, just because if you don't know exactly what you're looking for, it's very, very easy to miss. All right, here we go. Pack number two. Oh, um, okay, we have a, looks like one of those cloth inserts from a update series, the Jumbos. That's odd. All right, very curious to find that out. I almost want to jump to the middle just to save myself some suspense, but I want to give myself the suspense too. Alberta Bray, you rookie. Like, what is that? That has to be some kind of hit, right? Or is there like, are they doing inserts? I have no clue. Bo Burrows, Bo Bichette. Like, is it an autograph thing? Uh, I'm at a loss here. Maybe it's just an insert, though. I don't know. Nelson Cruz, Jumbo Gold Foil. Oh, we have an Ernie Banks ending in 230. The regular cards end in 213. So we do have an Ernie Banks photo variation. That's cool. And then we do have uh, Yankees Thurman Munson. That's really cool. Thurman Munson, little patch there. Huh. I like that. My dad's favorite baseball player is Thurman Munson. That's really cool. I want to sleeve it just because I've never seen anything like it aside from those, those jumbos. We have 70 years at Tops, Chipper Jones insert here. But that, that's, that's pretty cool. I do like that. All right, so we did get a photo variation here in a gold foil. Let me get these sleeved up. And I am going to sleeve up that Thurman Munson. They're a little awkward to sleeve, but they fit into regular sizes. That's pretty cool. I'm actually going to leave that here by the box, though. I'm not going to put it in the pile. Because I can't look at it. It's hiding in the pile. All right, pack number three. Gold foil, Jacoby Jones, Nate Pearson, 35th anniversary insert, Johnny Bench, reprint from the TDH insert set. Nate Pearson, rookie. All right, so let's sleeve up that gold foil. Gold foils are exclusive to Jumbo. Uh, you can get regular gold base parallels, which are numbered out of 2021. And that is something Tops does every year, at least since 2018, because uh, I have seen 2018 update gold uh, gold parallels. So that's how I know since at least 2018 Tops has been doing the gold base parallels being numbered out of the year. But there are those silver foils, which you can find in Hobbies and Jumbos, but you can only find those gold foils in Jumbo boxes. All right, here we go. Next pack. Almost, a pro no, almost at that halfway point here. Derek Scooball, rookie. We have a foil, Bryce Harper. Chris Bryant, 35th. Oh, I was like, wait a minute, what is that? This is a Tops Through the Years insert showing off a definitive patch auto of Otani. I was like, wait, insert auto, but it is not. Tops Through the Years, number 17, Shohei Otani.
All right, pack number five here of Jumbo Box number one. Looks like we have a hit and perhaps a die cut insert here in this pack. Alec Baum, rookie. Foil, Austin Meadows. We have a gold Jose Abreu, number 378 out of 2021. League leaders for the Sox. And we do have a 35th anniversary relic here, Ozzy Albies, for the Braves. You have just received a 1986 Topps relic card. So there is one of our two relics of the box. Keston Huda, 35th anniversary insert. And we do have platinum players die cut Ichiro. All right, let me get these sleeved up. And I actually am going to readjust some of these piles. The silver pack pile, I'm gonna leave the same, uh, but I'm going to move over these. Do you wanna set this larger rookie pile up there? And I'll actually put our sleeve pile here and I'm going to top load our hits and set them uh, probably right here, that way you guys can still see them behind my big fat head down here on the bottom right. So the Ichiro insert is going to be a little bit hidden. Alright, and we still have room to dump our base as we open. Alright, move that behind me. Here we go, pack number six. Still waiting on another relic and an autograph. Another Ryan Mountcastle. Christian Yelich Gold Foil. Hank Aaron, 35th anniversary insert. We have Ernie Banks, I'm assuming from the reprint set. Yep, Ernie Banks reprint. I have noticed uh, on the 70 Years of Tops inserts, it is the current players on the old timey cards and the old timey players on the new cards. Uh, so that's how I, I'm able now to more so set it apart from that reprint set. Because uh, uh, most often if you find an old-time player on an old-time card, it's going to be a reprint. And I'm sure it's probably easier for you guys all to pick them out because I'm not as familiar with vintage baseball cards. Uh, so I'm not certain what like an Ernie Banks rookie card looks like, although that looks really cute. I do like the little bear. Uh, but I'm sure you guys could tell right away, oh, that's a reprint of Ernie's card from whatever year. And I'm just like, I don't know what this is because I'm stupid. But that's okay, live and learn. That's just what I have noticed when looking at these different inserts. All right, do have four packs remaining here in jumbo box number one. And we'll do a recap at the end of box number two of all of our hits, and most likely all of our sleeved cards. Joe Adele, sleeve that up. Justin Dunn, Foil, 35th Anniversary with Merrifield, Through the Years, Kershaw. Three packs remaining here in Jimbo number one. Still waiting on our second relic and our autograph. Looks like we might have something here. I don't know, something bright blue sticking on out at me. Christian Pache, rookie number two of the box.
foil Brett Gardner. Another gold parallel here, Garrett Richards. Oh, that's cool. We do have a black auto here, black rookie auto of Yerman Mercedes for the White Sox. That is number 44 of 50. Do like the black and white theme here. It is looking like a black parallel for the Chicago White Sox who have a black and white uniform. So that looks cool. Yerman Mercedes, black rookie auto out of 50. Congratulations, 70 years of baseball. So that looks pretty cool. We have a Joe Adele. Sleeve that up as well. Nolan Ryan, platinum players insert. So still just waiting on one relic card now. We've got one relic, one auto. And then, of course, box number two will have another autograph for us. Always fun pulling autos. Of course, jumbos do guarantee it, so it's a little more special when you pull it out of hobby. But still, always a good time pulling an autograph. Let's get you all sleeved up, top-loaded. The whole shebang, Mr. Mercedes. Lots of sleevable cards here from pack number seven. Foil, Joe Adele, Christian Pache, Autograph, Gold Parallel. Do need to straighten that up. It's a little bit too slippery. All righty. Let me set this behind me and then we'll get into this last two jumbo packs. The Spin. Allie is the Spin Master. It's my Naruto power, Spin Jutsu. Got some rookies here to kick off pack number nine, Casey Mize. Foil, Freddie Galvis, Sonny Gray, 35th anniversary. Have a Mark McGuire, 70 years of tops. All right, and last pack of Jumbo Box number one. One more relic lies within this pack. And if not, then we got problem tops. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Can't tell what's in there. I wonder, I wonder what that is. Let's, let's check it out, unless this was our relic, which I don't know that that would make sense. I don't know. Let's just get into this pack right here. We have a gold foil, Mitch Hanniger, Eloy, home run challenge, Jacob deGrom, 35th, and stars in service, Andrew McCutcheon. So maybe I've just been mistaken the whole time, and that Thurman Munson was the first relic of the box. I mean, it's not like a relic relic. However, fake logo patches aren't relics either. So I actually am going to, after this pack, uh, of course, move the base off the side, sleeve up those foils, and then I will check the checklist real quick to see before I move into the next box, because I have never seen something like that. They, they did come out of the silver packs for 2020 jumbos for update. Like, that was the gimmick instead of these things right here. So, I don't know. I feel like that might be something fancy. Let me just go on ahead, open up a window with cardboard connection in it. Usually, that's where I just quick check for reference set checklist base rookies checklist base clear all right so we're autograph checklist sort of relic checklist relic checklist all right major league materials postseason performance spring training cap logo 70th anniversary logo patch autos top reverence auto patch old championship autograph relic sketch slash buyback checklist all right iconic manufactured patches set 
Don Mattingly, ICP DM. All right, is in the baseball relic slash sketch slash buyback checklist. So I assume, all right, it's also grouped with major league materials in the name, postseason performance, spring training logos. All right, so this must have been, uh, this is exclusive, by the way. It said hobby slash jumbo only. Uh, so this is, you can't find these in retail, but this actually did count as our first relic of the box. So I'm going to top load it. Why not? All right, I'm actually going to put it, it should fit in a 55 point, but I, I can't really squeeze it in there. So I'm just putting it in a 75 point. All right. So we did get both hits in this box. Very quick research to just double check, make sure we didn't get shorted. So interesting. I didn't realize what that was. I mean, it looks cool. Interesting. I say that's cooler than a fake little printed patch. I mean, I did really like that Casey Mize one we saw the other day because it was the Detroit Tigers logo and it had tiger stripes on it. So I thought that was cool looking, but I know people were collecting especially really nice rookies out of update. People thought those were pretty hot. So that's cool. I like that. I am partial to it. Like I said, that is my dad's favorite player. So I don't know. Well, Mauricio, I hope you thought that was cool. I think it's cool. Odd, though. Odd. I was not expecting that to count as a relic. I was honestly not expecting that to count as a hit. I would have thought that'd be like an SP insert or something, but no. It was not. I can imagine someone opening up a hobby box and only getting that and being super confused. Uh, so that is an interesting decision on Topps' part to put that, I guess, as a hit instead of an insert. But I guess, when you really think about it, patches are, or like relic cards, if they're all base napkins, it's kind of like an insert set. I don't know. Kind of weird. Kind of cool. Let me know your thoughts on that Thurman Munson fake iconic patch reprint insert slash hit from box number one in the comments down below. Are you as confused slash interested in it as I am? Because I really don't know. I mean, that's cool. I like it. I just don't know how to feel about that. So let me know how you guys feel so that way maybe I can form my own opinion in the comments down below. All right, once again, let's start off with that box loader. These don't seem to be put in very nicely, so I can imagine uh, you might open up one that's damaged. Like, I am a little concerned, actually, about this one. Let's check it out. There's no, like, cardboard or anything in these packs, which you think there'd be, like, a little bit of backing. All right, yeah, this one does have a bent corner here, unfortunately. Reminds me, oh, I had two bent corners, so a, a pretty obliterated here, Jacob deGrom. At tops, why? Reminds me of what was that set that had the posters? Um, was it Stadium Club Paper that had a it was a 2020 product, not a 2021 product. Obviously, this is one of the newest. Archives was the first, and then this is kind of right after it. Um, I think it might have been regular Stadium Club. It had the. Uh, I'm not 100% certain, so again, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but it had a box loader that was a, an insert set that it was like movie posters of like the, the player with their team and like just cool nicknames. Nicknames. Um, and there were big posters, and a lot of them were getting damaged on the top. I think it was Stadium Club, but like I said, I'm not certain. You'd think Tops would have learned from the damaged box loaders there, but apparently not. Nick Madrigal. I know his name, so I'm going to sleeve it up. That's pretty cool. I really do like the way this 35th anniversary insert set looks in the silver pack chrome. They are absolutely gorgeous. All right, silver pack number two. Maybe we'll find an auto. Oh, we got something gold, though. Gold refractor. Woo, Nate Pearson, Dalton Varsho, and we have Randy Johnson, 48 out of 50. Not an auto, but it is a gold refractor here. Number to 50 for the Diamondbacks. That is cool. Got numbered silver pack chrome. Always nice. Always nice. And all right, 10 more packs. Two relics. One more auto left to find inside. wonder if we could pull a sketch. That'd be really cool. I like sketch cards. I know. Are you base? No, you're just the RC stamps up top. I know a lot of baseball people aren't super crazy about sketch cards. Like like people in the Star Wars collecting community are. But I've seen some gorgeous stuff. I've never been able to pull a sketch out of museum collection. That would be something cool to do this year. Uh, which cost, just so you guys know, so you guys can get mentally prepared, cost, like store costs, like your local shop, us, other places. Um, 
is about what it retailed for last year. Cost on 2021 Museum Collection is $220 a box, which is honestly what I think we sold ours for last time. We have a black parallel here, Caleb Smith. Four of 70 for the Diamondbacks. Diamondbacks themed going on here. Clayton Kershaw, 35th anniversary. And Thurman Munson reprint. Okay, cool. And we saw you in a patch card that confused us. So that is very weird. I don't think we've gotten our numbers. That is not the right pile. I don't think we've gotten our allocation numbers on that yet. Although we've already gotten our allocation numbers for Series 2 flagship tops. Um, it's actually worse than Series 1. Southern Hobby is giving us, instead of a case and a half of Hobby and the two cases of Jumbo, we're getting a case and a half of Jumbo and like half a case almost of Hobby boxes. But we got our numbers for Topps Chrome, which isn't great either. We're getting like eight boxes of Topps Chrome. However, that is actually better than our allocation numbers for these wonderful sets, than our numbers for opening day, pro debut, and big league. Put together. Why are we getting cut to one box of Pro Debut Jumbo? Who actually wants that product? Like anyone that's not just like, oh, there's nothing out right now. Let's just get Pro Debut because it looks cool. I feel like is the main reason people buy that set. Or like opening day, it's like some kid walks in and be like, can I get a pack for a dollar? Yes. Why are we getting cut on opening day baseball? I mean, we'll take the Chrome. I mean, the Chrome isn't good, but when you put into perspective that we're getting more Chrome than opening day, pro debut, and big league put together. I don't know. It's weird. Really weird. I, I don't even know what to say about that. It's like, I can't be like, that sucks, because, like, it does. But it could be worse. I don't know. I feel like I'm being held hostage by Southern Hobby sometimes. Sometimes they give us really good numbers on stuff. Like, apparently, we got we got cut a lot on the cup hockey. We got cut from six cases to two. But apparently, Bossman was talking about how, like, Layton's was whining. They got, like, cut super hard on the cup. And, like, all these other stores got cut to zero. And it's like, we got two cases. It was really nice. We thought that was, like, eh. But, like, apparently, it's pretty good. We got something thick in here. We got foil, Motor City Mashers for the Tigers. And then we have Cody Bellinger, Spring Training. That logo cap. Ooh, I like I like these, though. Even though they're not real, they're, like, manufactured. I like it. It's the LA with the Dodger symbol inside. That's just really cool looking. That, I think, is a black parallel, perhaps, just because of the darkness. Uh, number 14 out of 299. Spring training cap logo patch. Cody Bellinger. We have Mike Trout Pat Platinum Players die cut insert. All right, so we have hit number one here of Jumbo Box number two. So if I had to guess, you're probably going to be seeing a uh, museum collection upwards just based on what, you know, things like Series 1 cost to us and what other shops have been selling Series 1 at and just based on the cost of museum collection. I wouldn't be surprised if the museum collection was... I mean, I think reasonably what it should be, even which I think is still kind of nuts. Museum collection like 300 but I feel like you're going to be seeing museum collection like 350 a box this year. Like, that's my unfortunate prediction. I don't like it. I don't like that. Which makes you wonder, like, if they do masterwork again, like Star Wars masterwork this year, which is Star Wars museum collection, essentially. Um, I know people are whining, especially in a lot of the Facebook groups I'm in, that uh, masterwork is around $400 now on the secondary market, like eBay and stuff. I mean, we did have a little restock at $325, and that went very, very quickly. Um, what would that cost? Because, <laughs> I mean, the, with the Masterwork, Star Wars Masterwork, you get two autos and then two additional hits, which can be, like, sketch cards, which are not that uncommon. You usually get, like, two to four per case. Uh, whereas you're not getting two to four sketch cards out of a box museum collection. You're getting, like, a, like, a little, like two little napkin relics and two autos. Joey Bart gold foil, that's nice. Tyler Stevenson. Stars and Stars, Ken Giffrey Jr., so, like, I would argue Masterwork is actually better than Museum Collection. It's just different subject, just based on the hits you're getting out of per box. So, like, what is that going to cost? <laughs> it's it's weird to think about. It's really weird to think about. The hobby's in a weird state right now. 
I mean, it's always nice seeing new people wanting to get in and new people like, oh, I just found cards and I used to collect when I was a kid and now I'm getting back into it. I love it. Or I just really like these players. I didn't know stuff like this existed. Or a lot of people that collect sports kind of moving over to the non-sports because it's the market hasn't kind of shot up like it has for sports and being like, I didn't even know they made Star Wars. I love Star Wars. I want the autos. It's just weird. Because the thing is, you can't just be like, oh, Tops just needs to increase productions because then it's just going to be like the 90s and then everything will be worthless. It's just very strange. We were talking about this a little bit last weekend during our live stream. Like, is this a bubble? And it's like, I think when things get more relatively back to normal, people won't be spending as much on cards. However, I don't think people are just going to stop altogether. Like, it might drop a little bit, but I don't think, like, everything's just going to go back to the days of $80 Series 1 hobby boxes and stuff. I, I just don't think so. Or like $200 Prism Basketball Hobby Boxes. I don't think that's ever going to happen ever again. I don't know. And I hope it doesn't stay as high because then obviously not as many people buy into it. Not as many people. And then a lot of people get frustrated and they leave. They're like, I don't want to deal with this BS because it is when you're paying that much. Eduardo Escobar Foil. Now we have one of these crazy greens. 289 out of 499 Nico Goodrum. Reminds me of like fish scales. Josh Donaldson, 35th anniversary, Buster Posey, 70 years of tops. Jesus Sanchez. I don't know. It's weird to see what, what, I mean, if we ever get back to normal, you never know that any of this stuff is ever going away. I mean, you'd, you'd hope, but I don't know. Is this just a new way of life? I, I have no clue. The only way to know is to just live it out and see what happens. I don't know. It's weird. It's just, it's just those numbers are so weird. Like, I know you guys hear me complain all the time as a shop. It's like, why are you giving us no product? And they still get no product, but the products that we get extra no product on make no sense. I mean, we're perfectly happy to sacrifice our opening day allocations to get, like, one more box of Topps Chrome. But why is that even a thing? Why, why are we getting cut on any of those products? Why are we getting cut on Big League, Pro Debut, and opening day? Why? Where is it going? Why is it like, oh, we didn't make enough? Like, who, what? Is like, are Platinum going to have, like, rip? 500 cases of opening day for what? Like, where is it going? Where is the product? I don't even know. Makes no sense. Christian Pache. I don't know. I just, uh, in case you guys haven't noticed, maybe this is your first time here. I like to complain. I like to rant. This is Allie's Soapbox. The return of Allie's Soapbox. That should be our video title. I was going to say, I was going to title the video, What is this patch? Question mark. Or like, what is this in my pack? In reference to that Thurman Munson. But now I'm just going to be like the return of Allie's Soapbox. Future Stars, Justin Dunfoil. And we have our second Relic of the Box. Yes, because we had that Cody Bellinger. Major League Material, Carlos Correa. That is a base. Base Relic for the Astros. Bogarts. Vlad Sr. Alright, so just two. Oh, no, actually. Aha! Uh Aha! -huh. Uh -huh. Good thing I checked. I mean, I, I could have seen by the different foiling, but this is actually a 70 Years of Tops insert, Flad Senior. In that same design as that other insert. All right. I mean, because the thing is with sports is like if you reprint too much of it, I mean, you're going to end up with a lot of base cards. You're going to end up with like a lot of parallels that... You, know, you can't really reprint parallels because they're numbered, unless it's an unnumbered parallel. But, like, I know Pokemon this morning announced that they're reprinting the last couple expansions just due to heavy, heavy demand. Uh, the thing is, is, like, that makes sense because Pokemon is a game. Like, yes, people collect it, but first and foremost, Pokemon is a trading card game. So if people can't get the cards to play the game, the business model goes out the window and they go, you know, zzzz. Like, you can't be holding official tournaments, which, I mean, they don't right now anyways. Uh, but you can't have tournaments if no one can make decks. If everyone's just like, I hoarded all the product and I'm selling it for $400 a box and I'm going to crack it and send it all to PSA. It's like, you can't play a game like that. So it makes sense for them to reprint because it's just, 
Everything's still the same rarity. It's just the volume is increased so people can actually buy it. But, like, you can't do that with sports cards. You just have to print more to begin with. So I don't really know what you'd do. Because I know people do like to make sense. But people don't really spend money on the base. So either the hits become even fewer and farther between, which means that they just get more expensive because you have to spend more to find any, which I don't think that would help. Or you just dilute the product in mass, which is also not very good. I don't know. It's weird. It's weird. I have no suggestions. I have nothing that I can offer to Tops as a solution. I'm just whining. The soapbox. Ooh, we got something gold coming up. Probably another foil, if I had to guess. It is Chicago White Sox foil. Garrett Cole, 35th. And we have History of Tops insert. First Tops all-rookie team. I don't see very many History of Tops inserts. I think that might be the hardest insert to find. Because uh, you are still finding a home run challenge per box. You can't see it. It's over here. Uh, even in hobby boxes. But I feel like we've only seen like three History of Tops inserts across like all the boxes we've opened. Which isn't very many, just quite yet, but still. Not in every single box. So that might be a hard set to put together. Unless it's like very, very small. Alright. Looks like there's four packs left. I'm going for the world record for slowest opening. 37 minutes to open up. 16 packs. To be fair, though, they are quite chunky. All right, here we go. Next pack. Oops. Smack that card. I did not sleeve up that gold foil. I will get that after this pack. I was too distracted by something. Oh, the History of Tops inserts. It was Patino. Gold foil, Chris Taylor. We have a gold parallel, Jake Odorizzi, 803 out of 2021, Brooks Robinson, and Mike Piazza. That is seven years of tops. I do really like those inserts. I believe we are just waiting on our auto here out of this box for Mauricio. First box did have that rookie black auto out of 50. Was a sticker auto. Wonder what we'll find this time around. Three more packs remaining. I caught it. Jacoby Jones, foil, and Keegan Aiken is our auto of the box rookie for the Orioles. Looks like a base auto there, Keegan Aiken. All right, so we've acquired all of our hits. Aaron Judge, 70 years of tops insert. Now we're hunting more rookies, more parallels. All right, let's get you sleeved up, Mr. Aiken. So we did get two rookie autos for our two autos of the box. Boxes, rather. All right, second to last pack. Alec Baum, rookie. Foil, Archie Bradley, Kettle Marte, another tops through the years, keeps teasing us with those facsimile autos. I do like the insert set. I, I just wish that we were actually getting the cards instead of pictures of those cards. 
Those are some sweet looking patch autos that we've seen on those inserts. All right, let me get the Bradley foil and the bomb rookie all sleeved up. And then we can get into our final pack here for Mauricio. Go ahead and move that out of the way. We don't need it anymore. Here we go. Last pack for Mauricio. Let's see. We got some gold foil in there once again. And that texture now I can see from that card. Um, that is the back of a home run challenge insert. So now I know what it is. Last time I was like, I don't know what that is, but now, now we know. Experience is key. That's how you learn. Sometimes you just have to mess up someone's name pretty horribly to get people laugh at you in the comments to learn that you made the mistake of mispronouncing their name. Sometimes it just happens. We have foil post-game hand wash. Look at that with the little, I'm guessing, hand sanitizer. That's pretty cool. Then we have Mike Trout home run derby insert. And a backwards Casey Mize. What are you? Are you a blue parallel? You are. Blue rookie parallel Casey Mize. 35th anniversary insert. King Griffey Jr. insert. And Glaber Torres. 70 years of tops insert number 17. Oh, we got some rookies in there. We have a big stack of rookie cards. Big, big, big stack of rookies to take a peek at. We're just going to actually just look at the size of it because it is humongous, not going to go through it. Did pull out, to my knowledge, all of the Joe Adele's Pache's and Bombs. Could be some mixed in there, but of course, as I mentioned at the beginning, I do, we do ship all base here at Titan unless you don't want it. Um, so even if I missed anything, uh, it is it is there. For you, for Mauricio, for whoever. But anyways, let me... I don't like that now that I move the box out of the way, everything's crowded onto the right side of the screen. So let me just tidy up a little bit. In the process, we'll show off some things. This is all rookies, all RC stamp base cards. Very cool, very cool. Just did get three stars and in service inserts across two boxes, three tops through the years. Uh, the reprint set, we only got three. 70 years of tops though, however, we did get seven. One history of tops, two home run challenges, three die cut platinum players and also we did get two autos of course did see a black Yerman Mercedes out of 50 and a base unnumbered Keegan Aiken also had one major league material base Carlos Correa the Cody Bellinger cap patch numbered out of 299 the unnumbered 35th anniversary Aussie Albies and this temporarily mystery card the Thurman Munson iconic patch reprint and then let's take a look at all of our sleeve cards. Again, a healthy pile of sleeved up stuff. As you can see by the curvature of some of the cards, do have some of the silver pack stuff mixed in. Uh, but we're just going to take a look, take a gander. None of the foils are numbered. These gold base parallels are out of 2021. These greens out of 499. Black out of 70. This Randy Johnson is out of 50. That is a gold refractor. Another gold out of 2021. Oops. Photo variation Ernie Banks from box number one. Forgot we had that. And we had Alec Baum, Mike Trout out of the silver packs from box number one. Then I guess we could take a look at our box loaders as well. Box number ones was nice and crispy. Nice, uh, nice little Buster Posey there. Unfortunately, box number two did have that double-cornered Jacob deGrom, top left and bottom, well, top right and bottom left from the front. And that'll do it here for these two boxes for Mauricio. Thank you so much, Mauricio, for letting me open up some more Topps Baseball for you. Hope you enjoyed the opening. I know it was a long one. I hope it wasn't too drawn out for you. Hope you enjoyed it and love all these new additions to your collection. Now, you guys out there watching as well, if you made it to the end, thank you so much. I really appreciate you sticking with me. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to go ahead and hit that like button. Comments for me. Leave those down below. And, of course, if you're not yet part of the Titan Cards family, we'd love to have you with us. Make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Also, before I get on out of here, I know it's been a lot of me today, but I definitely do have to give a big shout out to all of our channel members. Thank you so much. You guys are going above and beyond with your support of the channel. Bossman and I truly do appreciate it. Do have five Black Label fans and did Bounty Hunter Breaks, Epicenter Gaming, Stephen Olivo, and Stephen Bly. And then we also do have seven Jim Mint fans as well. 
Anthony Basileo, Devon, Dusty Art Shaletta, Geriatric Geek, Jake Ryan OC, Joe Howe, and Michael C. So thank you so much, you guys, for your above and beyond support. And all channel members do have their names shown on screen at the end of every single video. But that'll do it for me tonight. I'll, of course, be back with those live breaks tomorrow, every Saturday night, starting at 7.45 p.m. I am here opening up boxes live. Do have more Jumbos, more Hobby Boxes Series 1. Also have a mix of some Yu-Gi-Oh, some Star Wars Masterworks, Series 1 Hockey as well. Uh, so a bit of variety, not as much as usual, just because of what we have in stock, which is honestly not much at the moment. Uh, but if you're definitely craving more Top Series 1's opening, make sure you come sh uh, drop by tomorrow night, like I said, 7.45 p.m. Eastern Time, every single weekend. But that is it for me here. Thank you so much for watching, everyone. Take care, stay safe, and hope to catch you in the next video. Bye!